a three hour drive to Aberdeen tomorrow and then a three hour drive back. Fun. I'm not looking Is it our dog situation that. or is it? No, it's a baseball situation. All right, okay. Yeah, uh, there's a team up in Aberdeen now. And since you play every other team three times, that means either two away games or one away game for each team against each team. And we've got a double header tomorrow, so that's three hours of driving, two games of baseball, and then three hours of driving. That, yeah, that sounds to Aberdeen of all places. To Aberdeen of all places. So I'm hoping that uh, the weather gods will be kind to us and. Yeah, but you have no. to realise no matter what um, the weather is in Aberdeen, it will still be like fucking Arctic tundra. Yeah, yeah. I don't mind Arctic tundra. I'm a, I care if it's like pouring with rain. It should be interesting. Well, the forecast says it will be about eleven degrees and cloudy, so it shouldn't be too bad. That is perfect baseball weather. Is that perfect baseball weather? Although yeah, there's, you, there's potentially winds of 20 miles an hour. That's what okay. I was about to say, because Aberdeen's a pretty fucking windy place. That you just need to watch out for. That you just need to know what way the wind's blowing. Uh, the, but yeah, the ball that comes back and whacks you in the face. Please no. <laughs> <laughs> More teeth missing. Oh, I don't have any left. These are all fake. Um, no, it's it's perfect. It's like I, I I like a little bit of cloud cover. It means you're not getting the sun in your eyes. You can pick out the ball in the in the sky. It's perfect baseball weather. Well, as it's flying towards your face. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. why you have the glove. I've heard. <laughs> not quite got used to that. Oh, face glove. Face glove. Yeah, you staple one to your face, and then it just kind of absorbs the impact. Hi. Yep. Uh, welcome to Headset Abuse. My name is Ali Hay. Today is Saturday, the 6th of May. We're into May, guys. Uh, I think we did one podcast in April. <laughs> it yeah, like, well, oh, yeah. it, was, it was an executive decision uh, that I decided not to do any podcast until I got Persona 5. Right, okay. Is that what it is? Uh, yeah. So thankfully it arrived uh, yesterday. Otherwise, God, who knows what would have happened. Um, yeah, because that game. That could be worse. I could have made an executive decision not to do any podcasts until I got my Switch back, which means we would never be doing a fucking podcast. How do you still not have your Switch back? Still gone. How do you still not have your Switch back? So I I don't know if Darren was privy to the um, the, the, the ongoing saga that is my Switch. uh, I know you sent it back the first time, got it back, and then within like, what was it, two weeks it broke again? No, two days. Two two days. days. (laughs) Um, It was a case that they hadn't fixed it. Like I, I emailed, uh, I talked customer support, and they were like, "Yeah, turns out they, they might not have fixed the fault." I was like, "So what, let me get this straight." You sent me. I called you up for, <laughs> made a big fuss over, and had you set, had you send it and write a note in the actual thing, you just fixed the Joy-Con and then sent me back the fucking stupid broken tablet. You guys like, yep. Thanks, guys. So, so where it is just now is the um. I got a text maybe about two weeks ago saying that, hey, Have we're currently switch. working on your Switch. Um, and uh, we're going to, because like, it took a while to get there because of the Easter bank holiday weekend thing. Uh, yeah. um, and, they, and they were like, we have your Switch. Expect it back within three to five days. That was two weeks ago. So I messaged them, not this week, but last week. And they're like, oh, yeah, we're, um, we're waiting for parts. Like, brand new parts. It's like, as if that makes a fucking difference. And like, so maybe add on seven days to what they said. Still haven't got it yet. Still haven't received nice. any word yet. So I am going to be kicking up one hell of a fuss. Not only have you sent it in before, sent it to them again. You're expected to wait longer than in uh, ETA, and you didn't even fix it in the first place. So, so the, the 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 main thing that irks me is that. The thing came out in like the third of March, right? And I've had two weeks with it. <laughs> You've had more time owning it but not having it than yeah. owning it. So that, it. That's, that's, that's customer, that's customer service have had more time with Mark Switch than Mark. Totally. <laughs> like Nint- Nintendo have actually been running a hundred and twenty-seven year long con just to get Mark's money. 
a Joy-Con. <laughs> what it actually is, is someone at Nintendo's customer service department went, oh, here's a bit that's finished the intro of Zelda. I'm just going to play it from here. What do you mean yeah. fix it? Oh, this is my Switch. Yeah, they're just at the testing phase, and they're like, actually, every Nintendo Switch gets tested by playing through the entirety of Zelda. Completely. So every we'll single side it. quest, every single collectible. Yeah. So it might take a while to get back to you, Mark. So, so that's a... So that's oh, good God, to, you know, to ruin the news a little bit as well, you're going to have to wait even longer because there's DLC just yeah, to come yeah. out. They're like, what, we've got to do it in hard mode now? Wait, I work here and I have to pay for the DLC? <laughs> Yeah, so um, I'm I'm gonna talk to them on Monday and like see what I can get out of it because it's kind of unacceptable uh, for them. Ridiculous. Yeah. Um, like ridiculous. I'm gonna be pushing for like maybe give me some money off Mario Kart. That would be real nice if you could do that. But giving us Nintendo, they'll probably go like, yeah, here's a fucking keyring or something. Yeah. So you become the Nintendo Switch broken part ambassador. <laughs> <laughs> And they send you back all the broken parts as well as your spec switch. But that ah, takes Mr. an extra two to three Mr. Ambassador, with this broken switch, you are really spoiling us. <laughs> is, that, <laughs> is, is, is that at the place where they're fixing it in Bristol? I? I can't even remember where it is. It's like, it's it's somewhere like London-ish, I think, if I remember rightly. But, um... your, your London accent's coming on really well. Mark. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah. Dick Van Dyke. That's, that's my Dick Van Dyke impression from Mary Poppins. <laughs> Your Dick Van Dyke doing. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, have you actually been playing anything in the time that you've not had anything to play? Um. Yeah. I have. Um. So there are these things called clicker games. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah um, didn't they disappear yeah. about a year and a half ago when I stopped playing them? Maybe, but uh, I've been playing Tap Titans too. Uh huh. Uh, I remember when you used to give me so much shit for playing clicker games. Listen, I don't have a uh-huh. fucking switch. I've got to be like, I've got to amuse myself somehow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh it's no, don't, I don't yeah, have no. a switch. I've only got an Xbox One <laughs> and a laptop. Ah. So, so I have actually been playing a game. I've been playing uh, ukulele. Yep. Yeah, I've not even yeah. played it yet. I've had it since before release, and I've not played it yet. Yeah, how's Metal Gear Solid Five going? Shut up, Ali. So, um, so let let me preface this. Like, I played through Banjo. Uh, preface. Yeah. So, I like I I played like what the entirety of Banjo Kazooie and a lot of Banjo Tooie. Like this time last year, I want to yep. say maybe. Um, we did like a full dissection of that game on here. Like, I th- mm. I think. Well, I talked about <laughs> it at length. Um, Ad nauseum. When I got my good old handy cardboard cut out of me and sat it down, I went off. So those those games like were in a real good place like back in ninety seven where it was like level levels weren't too big, there weren't too many collectibles, and then like as the procedure went on, like things kind of went off the rails with Banjo Tooie and Ban like Donkey Kong sixty four where levels weren't as memorable and didn't have enough focus because they weren't just eight. Um Ukulele suffers a lot from that particular issue. Um, so, so for those don't, who don't know what ukulele is, uh, this is the spiritual successor to the, like your Banjo Kazooie's, your Donkey Kong sixty four, and it was a Kickstarter. Darren, you were said backer of Kickstarter. Is that right? Yes, I was. Yep. Um, I don't think it's a very good game. Uh, the, the, I think the music's real good. Um, I think some of the character design is pretty good. Um. But just in terms of the way that the game communicates what you're supposed to do, like the level design, it's all like super confusing and super bland. Uh, there is not one memorable level in that game. No. And there's only five of them Whoa. for a start. Um, but like the, the way they do it is that you unlock the world and then there's a lot of empty space in this world. And then once you collect pages instead of jiggies this time, um, you have the option to expand the world. But like all I do is I feel like that tax extra shit on, and um, because a lot of the pages are like repeat the same thing twice, so like there for example it's like 
do this really shitty arcade style game and then like do it again and beat the high score. And like that learn you two of your twenty five pages in the world. Um I've yet to, <laughs> I've yet to see anything that like made me go, huh, that's pretty cool. Whereas I feel like Banjo kazooie was just full of those moments. Um and that's all looking on it with rose tinted glasses, like that was me playing it like a year ago and like going back and going, Oh yeah, this is pretty cool. Because every single level in that has its own theme or is like has the design of like it is built around one specific thing and like everything is well integrated with it. Like ukulele doesn't have that. It's like a lot of pathways and a lot of corridors in specific instances and there while there might be like a little open areas, like nothing from it really feels like it's a cohesive world. Yeah, I mean even uh, nuts and bolts um did what you like I mean I've never played the first two banjo games but from the way you're talking, like that's what they continued forward. Um that sense of like each world having its own sense of place and yeah. you know its own kind of theme to it. Um and that wasn't you know that wasn't ninety seven. Yeah, that was what twenty eleven. I want to say. Yeah, maybe we were in there. We'll fly back there. Um, that might have been earlier, but I like, think it was about late oh nine. Yeah, so like while um, Banjo Kazooie Nuts and Bolts had like a lot of empty space, it was trying to be its own like different thing. Um, because obviously the two thousand eight. Oh, God. that game's almost ten yeah. years old. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of empty space in Nuts and Bolts, um, which because of the vehicle aspect kind of fit with that. Um, there's a lot of empty space in ukulele. Um, they don't have the excuse of, hey, you're going to be traveling real fast down like in a car or something. Um, you have like your base mechanics of, okay, you can do like the roll, which makes you faster. You can go up hills. You can do like the butt jump, butt stomp. Um, you can fly. Um, and like this will be governed by like your power meter, um, which you can expand by collecting like hidden uh, collectibles and levels um, but I feel like it's been a real struggle to play it oh. like um, n- not in terms of like the, uh, like I don't know what I'm doing blah 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 because blah, there, there have been aspects of that like you'll spend half an hour in one area trying to figure out if you can do something and the game doesn't communicate whether or not you have the ability yet um, but just in terms of like anytime I go off the game like I don't want to go back to it yeah um, which is probably more damning than anything you can possibly level at it, but um, like the controls are real loose, I guess. Like nothing feels tight, which is in the platformer really yeah. bad. Um, and like the camera's just garbage. Like it constantly gets like like cop and geometry and. Does it feel like an N64? Does it feel like a banjo kazooie? No, it feels. It feels like they didn't. So Banjo Kazooie, like they improved the camera a little bit for like the rare collection and like the HD remake. Mm-hmm. Um, it feels like they didn't take those learnings forward, and we're just like, yeah, no, it's just it's supposed to go into this wall and then not be able to get back out. Um, yeah, I, and it's not like I went into the game and like I, as I said, like I, I found it a real struggle to get back into it. But um, I played the game for maybe about twelve hours. Mm-hmm. I've like one hundred percent of the first two worlds. Um, and the other three worlds are in that game are just like so bland and so unmemorable that I'm just like maybe I'm done with this. And like I bought the disc version as well, so like it's not like I bought that because it was ten dollars cheap, like ten bucks cheaper. Um, I feel if I had played like paid full price for that game, that I would have feel really ripped off. Um, I know that um, Platonic have said that they're going to do like. Uh, a quick pass through of like we're going to start the camera and the controls and stuff but I feel like the problems extend beyond that yeah it's it's bogged down by those things like but by the camera by the loose controls but that's not the major problem with it that's just more on top of what you're not enjoying yeah and like the the way that the dialogue is, like it's like your banjo kazooie type thing of like, everybody like talks and grunts and squeaks. And stuff. Yeah, yeah, totally. But like, so the way in kazooie and Tui and even like DK sixty four, um, you hold down the A button to like make it go faster and like at the end. Um, instead of doing that, it just skips to the end of the line and then 
slowly scrolls up to the next line under. So it'll be like one like squeak and then nothing, and then like a squeak or a bark at the end. Oh. Um, and if you press A to like skip through that as well, it will go on to the decision which will come after that, which can sometimes give you like. So, <laughs> so there are quizzes throughout the game. Um, and like Banjo Kazooie had this at the end. I think Donkey Kong 64 had this at one point as well. Um, By any chance, do you do the Pokemon thing where you're hammering, or like the RPG thing where you're hammering, like basically trying to get through the dialogue and you restart yep. the dialogue, but yep. you're choosing these choices? Or the Zelda exactly. thing where it's like. Yeah. Exactly. That's the problem. Yeah. Um, and so you will hit the wrong. Like you get three wrong answers, and if you get three wrong answers, you have to start again and you have to get to it, 10 questions right. And um, Banjo did it really well in that it was like, okay, so you're going to get played a bit of music. What's this level from? What's the sound effect from? What's this piece of art from? In, in ukulele, there's like really fucking arbitrary questions of like, how many pipes are in this room? Or how many pipes times crates are in this room? Or the best one was, I've, I've been in one session, like I hadn't gone back to the the pause screen or anything it's like how long have you been playing for it's like <laughs> well how the fuck am i supposed to know that and i got that is one that, wrong and i was just like total time played is it yeah no like just on this session it's like how long have you played up to now and it's just like i don't, I I don't know, know. <laughs> like what the don't make, don't make me confront that ukulele. <laughs> but it's like it's like a bunch of stats of like how many pages have you collected on there? How many notes are on this one specific place in this level right now? It's like Banjo did it really well, and it was like general knowledge and like if you paid basic yeah. attention to the levels, you could yeah. progress. But like this time, it's like trial and error, like just hammer your way through it. Like the, the as I say, like um, I think that was on the second level where you have to get a page, and he's like doing some weird quiz thing of like. And the room is dark. Like there's there's a really dark room. You can't see anything unless you get like your glow ability and walk around and like take notes of how many things, how many pipes times boxes are in this fucking room. That's dark. It's just like that sounds like a saw puzzle. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it felt like a saw puzzle, and that I wanted to hack my leg off. Um, but yeah, like I, I just feel done with that game, and like real fucking disappointed because I, I've ranted to you guys how much I like Banjo-Kazooie and um, that style of platformer and like it was super interesting to me to decide to go back to it but yeah I don't know it's yeah I've been kind of putting off playing it since you kind of started bashing it when you got it because I very much enjoyed Banjo-Kazooie and was essentially hoping for more of that less banjo to me, more banjo to me, but uh, yeah, so I've been kind of trepidatious about playing it because I don't want to stomp all over my love of banjo. Because uh, I, uh, but just before I moved down here, it was about two years ago, played through banjo and was like, yeah, this game's still awesome. Apart from that last fight on the tower, I always have hated that fight. Because it's over, like the difficulty spike is real. Yeah, uh, but yeah, I don't want to. I want to spoil that because that's an awesome game. Yeah, and like, thankfully, Banjo's still there. Like that HD version still holds up. Um, and it's real fucking odd that you can say that, you know, a ten-year-old game is better than the spiritual successor that was just made like a few months ago. But um, yeah, I don't know. Um, I might go back to it to see what they do with the patch. But at the moment, I'm just really fucking done with that game. I'm just like. Yeah. It's unmemorable, it's bland, and like every time I feel like I should play it, I hate myself a little bit more. <laughs> That's unfortunate. I know, right? And I was really looking forward to it. So, like. Yeah. Hey, hey, well, and you, you've got the Crash Collection coming out soon. Yeah, Therese wants to pick up a PS4 for that, so. Probably have to Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll probably pick that I up at some point. Very much want to get the uh, Crash Collection. I played for three. Despite the fact best. I played through all three of those games not that long ago. The first well, one I is... Think I, like, ah, assuming, they keep the games, they, assuming they keep the games almost exactly the same as they were, the only thing I'm not really looking for, if I were to in the, the 3D collection, sorry, HD collection, is Crash looks really fucking weird. 
Crash has always know, looked really fucking weird. No, but it looks like not the weird that he used to. It just looks like this really creepy, like, I'm going to come and get you in the night kind of look. It's called creative license, Darren. <laughs> <laughs> the guy gave him a backstory. <laughs> okay. He's a bandicoot that steals your children. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what it looks like. He's a bandicoot that wears fingerless gloves and jean shorts. He's no, a monster already. Oh, he's John Cena. Yeah. God, that would be great. Anyway, what were we talking about? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I was looking up... Um, I kind of want to play through the Saw games. That talking about Saw reminded me of it. Who put them out? Was that THQ? Probably. Uh, sounds about right, yeah. I started playing one of the Saw games years and years ago. I think I finished the first level. Nope. Apparently, crap. apparently the second one is pretty good. Uh, I, I, feel, I feel that we had this conversation like five years ago. Yeah, probably. I think I th- like I, I don't think they're good games. I think that they're... Intolerable? Re- relatively well done um, QTE games, basically. Like, hey guys, you want to hear about a good QTE game? No. <laughs> I hate QTE. I despise QTE. It's the worst gaming thing ever. It's Unless so... they're done well. No, yeah, like, there, there, are, done there, well. Are, there are Give games. Give me examples well. of well done uh, uh, God of War. QTE. No. Azure is rough. No! Okay, that's two okay. good examples I, I, that I, I, I don't like. <laughs> Naruto does it alright sometimes. And it's just right. Right, we've all got one option that no one agrees with. So the old right trigger to burst. Yeah, <laughs> terrible example. So we, of QT. we all agree that the worst QT game ever is Resident Evil Four. Uh, no, Resident Evil Six. The Resident Evil Six have QT. I didn't even yeah. finish Resident Evil Six. Yeah. It was so fucking bad. I played um, through Leon's first first oh, mission in this campaign. Yes. And went nope, done. I, I got bare example: the last boss fight in Shadow Mordor. I've not done a Shadow of Mordor. That's, that's that boss fight that's like just like hit B. <laughs> well, I am looking forward to those if you've watched any of the development footage for the alpha of Shadow of War. No, nope. I've, I've deliberately stayed away from yeah, that. Yeah, like, I, 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 ac- I accidentally stumbled upon the thought, eh, I'll watch what this is, and then it's a lot more of what I, than what I was expecting. Some of the stuff that I'm pulling there is really quite cool, so I will not say anything because if you're avoiding it, I don't want to spoil it. Yeah, it's more, I think, the more that I hear about that game and hear the Lord of the Ringsiness of it, that I'll be like, eh, and then... Surely that makes it better, Ali. No. Uh, did anything Lord of the Rings make Shadow War- uh, Mordor better? I gave it this like weird kind of, like, they're taking the lore seriously type of thing, because if you read and, like... We're taking the lore seriously, here's Gollum! Well, bar that, yeah. Um, that was the only thing that was really done ham-fistedly in that game, bar, bar yeah. the last boss fight. But um, yeah, but none of none of the story really grabbed me in Shadow of Mordor. Um, which I suppose, if you're into the lore and it's done wet, like I don't really know if it's done well. But um, well, the big thing about that game was that it was the player story of like this yeah. orc really fucking pisses me off. He's now my nemesis. Yeah, exactly, I'm exactly. gonna go kill him. And that's why I loved it. But you know, yeah. there were people that were like, oh my god, you play as this guy who's the ghost of this let's, guy. Let's, that... Cal- Calibrimbor is a big part of the Lord yeah, of the Rings. Yeah, he, he made the uh, ring. He made the, ring. Is <laughs> he made the one, he made the one ring. He what what ring did he make? He made the three elder strings. Yeah, so I'm, I'm with it. I'm hip. <laughs> To these fifty-year-old books, yeah, it's um, I enjoyed like as far as Lord of the Rings goes, I enjoyed those three bo- the three movies, and it pretty much ends there for me. Not the Hobbit. Uh, I've never seen the Hobbit, and I've, I've also read the Hobbit. Me. Read the Hobbit. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there's there's a massive difference between read the Hobbit and way down here watch the Hobbit. It's it's the Hobbit movies are so bad compared to. It's probably been about 15 years since I tried to read The Hobbit and I got halfway through and I was like, meh. Read The Silmarillion. It's a fantastic Ooh. book. The Silmarillion is great. The Silmarillion is such a good book. I tried it's to read... super, super fucking dry, though, if you're not... I tried to read the I tried to read Lord of the Rings and I was so fucking bored. Oh, it's so good. 
So boring. No, it's really not. So good. No, I'm not, I'm not saying they're bad and I'm not saying people should. I just like was bored to tears. Yeah, nah. You have to remember where that is, though. That is like, that's bordering on classical literature at this point. Yeah, absolutely. Like, yeah. no, they're. they're it's, it's like a completely different style of writing. Like, because I'm reading. Um, I'm reading the third Mistborn book right now. And they're like, mm-hmm. there's night and day difference in language mm-hmm. in that. Even like, as flowery as like Robert Jordan, like, wrote like it was nowhere near Tolkien in those regards as well but um i mean those books are coming up in what 70 years old uh 19 oh god when would that 50s i know the hobbit was around then uh, wasn't the lord of the rings like late 60s early 70s i didn't think it was that late but yeah we're you know you're coming up on let's call it between 50 and 70 years that's people talked weird back then yeah, of course. The Hobbit was originally released in 1937. What? So yeah, Lord of the Rings would have been the 50s then. Well, he had to go back and rewrite yeah. The Hobbit because of the stuff from Lord of the Rings. And the Lord of the Rings was originally published in 95. Sorry, 55. 55. 54. Wow. My God. 54. 54. Yeah. yeah. So it's uh, 63 years old. Mm-hmm. So yeah, people talk weird back then. <laughs> They're still amazing books. They are, they, they are yeah. the best books I have read. Some might say genre defining. Uh, some would say genre creating. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so is it, is it basically ukulele and clacker games? Yeah, I've um, been watching a bunch of stuff. Um, Therese and I have been going through Always Sunny. Oh, um, I just finished all of it. That's oh, it's so good. We, it's last episode, so... We're I on just... season two. The last episode we watched was uh, $100 Baby, the one where yeah. uh, he gets addicted to steroids. That one's fantastic. Um, yeah, working through those. Uh, Therese says she wants to watch Richard, uh, Rick and Morty at some point. Um, yeah, I do. I really like that show. Awesome. So I have not watched season three yet, but um, I, I, I know they, re- they released one episode. They released and one episode. Down. Yeah, they, they released one, and I don't know if they released anything since. I'm kind of I'm waiting no. for it to be released. I would rather watch a few back to back rather than wait forever. But I want to watch one and then wait for months. I think yeah, I think it's um, I think it's coming out soon. Because I know they put that the first episode on Facebook and then pulled it like it was only up for a day. Was it like an April Fool's it, thing? It, yeah, yeah, it went up. Yeah, on but April it was the, it was the full episode. Yeah, yeah, it was. That uh, and there's no release date for episode two yet. Uh, what else have we been doing? Uh, still watching Samurai Jack. That uh-huh. season's about to wrap up. It's real good. Um, watched a few episodes of uh, Shingeki no Kyojin that came out, aka Attack on Titan. It's real good as well. Um, aside from that, just waiting on my fucking switch so I can get Mario Kart and play that. <laughs> I just finished um, Parks and Rec uh, final season. All right. Um, I worked my way through all of it. Actually, I worked my way from like the end of season two because that's when it gets good or really good. Um, and then straight through to the season seven, which I hadn't seen before. And I'm sad because it's gone. That show's so good. Either you like Parks and Rec? Uh, Therese got super into it. it. Like, I didn't... She I watched it without tried, me, so... I think I tried to watch one episode, went, ah, this doesn't really seem like it's for me, and then left it. Skip season one entirely, and then go on to see, start from season two. I'll maybe consider it. What have you been playing, Darren? Not very much. No? No, um... Lots Man, can you imagine when you have all this time off and you're able to play games? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be nuts, actually, again. Uh, be solid five. I'm trying to think what I'm playing. Uh, the newest thing I've played is Mass Effect. <laughs> One. Um, yeah, <laughs> no Andromeda. Uh, completely finished the first world. Uh I've started the second, and I'm on the section where it's going to split off in lots of different directions, and then things happen, and I've essentially stopped playing games since then. So, how, uh, are, how are you finding that? Because I know um, 
Mass Effect super fan Sean uh, traded his in before he yes, finished it. He, he has traded his in, not even finished the game. Uh, it's a lot of meh for me. Like, it's not great. Yeah. It's Mass Effect. It's mafia perfect. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's good, but it's, it's lacking. It feels like it lacks the depth that the other ones did, even if removed the terrible, terrible ending from three. Um, yeah, it's, it's nowhere near up to the standard of the other ones. It's still, it's still a good game, like, just playing it. Um, I enjoy, like, that style of combat, but the... Yeah, it's hard to talk about how that game is. <laughs> Try. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> everyone's just to They open, like, a book. You ask them one simple question, you just go, here's my entire life story that I didn't want to tell you about until you asked me, like, a simple question. That was always, like, it's funny, because that was always the problem with Mass Effect, is that, you know, like, everyone kind of talked like robots, no one talked like people talk. It's like, what can you tell me about this subject? Well, I can tell you this about this subject. And it was like, and as the games went on, like they got better at that. And it seems that they've just kind of pulled that right back to. I mean, that, that's been like for... a Bioware issue because like, even yeah, like yeah. the Old Republic like, had that back in the day as well. I was going to say, any game of that kind of nature is going to have that problem. If you ask someone, tell me about this topic, it's going to give you about that topic because it's not going to be here's a whole bunch of information that you have to remember in one giant spiel. Well, you I mean, like, I I recently watched um, Therese play, like, the opening part of The Witcher. Um, yeah, like, Witcher 3. I, I feel like that did that really well. Um, that's a great example of that done better than most games. But then she found that the game was way too dense at the start, and she's like, no, that scared off. So, so good, though. But, uh, yeah, Mass Effect, I could probably be quite happy if I didn't go back to it. Well, I'll probably will at some point just to keep playing through it because I want to see how it goes and get to the end and then make a proper judge on it. But right now, I probably wouldn't miss it if I didn't go back to it. I, uh, I feel a lot of people are in that situation with that game. Yeah. I feel that uh, uh, Darren has quite a tepid response to that game compared to some people. Yeah, true, true. Yeah. Uh, I'm not a pure mega super fan of Mass Effect, though. I, the first one was... Good. I really enjoyed the second one. The third one was a bit of a letdown. Yeah. So I'm just kind of like, eh. I wasn't. I wasn't like super taken to it. Like it I was kind, was kind of like, uh, I want to see what they can do with it. They can't really yeah. do much with it. Goodbye again. Yeah. yeah. Um, I played. I wouldn't say a significant amount, but I got through a lot of the first section and expanded the entire world of uh, Horizon Zero Dawn. Yeah. It's been quite a while since I played that. But that is a game. fantastic game. Yeah. So good. That is a game right there. You want to play a good game? Play Horizon Zero Dawn. Yeah! <laughs> uh, other than that, filling my time with smatterings of Neo and Clacker games. <laughs> How is Neo? And I really want to play Neo. Neo's good. I enjoy yeah. Neo. Yeah, it's, it is more essentially Dark Souls. Before are you talking about Neo? Well can I just say, I'm sick of you guys shitting on me for playing certain things and then like three years down the line be like, oh, I'm playing clicker games now. <laughs> but I never shat on you for playing clicker games because I used to play clicker games years ago on Steam um, and then I stumbled onto one went, ah, that's not really my one. Oh, I wonder if that one's still good. Yeah, that hey, one's if you want a good Steam clicker game, try Time Clickers. That's I good. used to play Time Clickers. I, when you yeah. said you were playing that, I used to play it as well. Yep. And then I, I wonder how much I've actually accrued since the last time I played. Because I re-downloaded like, um, the, the, the clicker of choice I used to play was uh, Clicker Heroes. And I re-downloaded it in Steam and it, I can't even remember the amount of money I had. But it remembered from like yeah. two years ago when I last played it. And then we're like, you've earned quadrillions and squillions of pounds. I was like, awesome, buy everything. <laughs> And then he reset, and it was all back to normal again. And he was like, "Oh, I'm slightly more powerful." <laughs> yeah. Now I've been playing it uh, quite a bit on my iPad, and they've introduced lots of new stuff into that, which is interesting. Yeah. But yeah, it's just essentially more of the same in a different way to do more powerful things. But, you know, it's a way to kill time when I wake up in the morning and don't when I'm walking to work or what. Yeah. 
Yeah, when I'm walking to work, I'll just power up my little guy. Yeah. But yeah, sadly, nothing too amazing to report. Uh, I got prey yesterday, but nice. I have not had a chance to put it in yet. But I am very much looking forward to playing that because prey is awesome. It's not going to be what we all wanted from Eurogamer and getting prey two, but. You know, it's, wait, wait I'm going to get my t shirt. Just, just hold on. <laughs> I could grab my t shirt. I know exactly where it is. <laughs> yep. Yeah. My heart um, will always ache for Prey 2 that never came. Yeah. It's. But I, I, I'm interested to see what this Prey is. Uh, scores yeah. have started coming out and they're relatively good. But um, it's just. I don't think it'll be one that I get right away. Um, mainly for what I need to get through already. Yeah, I'm, I'm hoping this weekend that I can hand the break. I've not got much to do, so take care of the few things that you do and then pray it up. So with the Horizon, have you, have you done the trial? Yes. So that, is, that kind, is that kind of like your last yeah, big moment? Yeah. Uh, that was the last massive thing that I've done. Uh, post and, can, and that's you opening rather, up into the world. Rather than heading to the next goal, and is it, I want to call it, say, Marina, Marina? Uh, I think so. Yeah, I'd rather than going to Marina, which is like up and to the left, I've gone up and to the right. Yep. To explore oh, what's that, going on. That, that, bit can, that bit can fuck you up. Yeah, I've essentially, uh, as I was moving up, I essentially moved left and right across the map, sweeping across, doing everything, and then before it got to the critical point where you essentially have to head towards Marina, I went, nope, this way. Yep. So yeah. I've, I've gone off in totally the wrong direction, deliberately, just so I can see what's going on. Found uh, the the underground area that contains the crazy mega super suit. Yep. I power. I've completed the first puzzle, and I've got the second puzzle, which is find the next set of cores to power it. But it's just a mm-hmm. case of grinding it until I find that stuff. Um. But yeah. All in all, really good game. Yeah. The uh, only problem I'm having is the first hunter's lodge that I've come across. Mm-hmm. I aced those three challenges without most trouble. And the game still insists that I hand in a quest there and talk to the guy that runs the lodge. So everything. yeah, so that uh, that annoyed me as well. It's really badly um, uh, communicated. They're repeatable. You have oh. got you you've you've done it all. Because I was like, I've done this quest. Are you actually going to like? I th- I, and I was like, they have to do each. They have to get each level or something. But no, it's um, you just. It's just it never goes away. Fair enough. Yeah, and, and that, 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 I wish that would just go away. It's it's just weirdly because it's not necessarily bad. It's just that the no, way that I, 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 it, I, I think it is bad because what it says is this is a quest marker. Go yeah. here and talk to the guy. Every other instance of quest in that game is go here, talk to the guy, advance the quest. But yeah. this is just go here and talk to the guy. They, they should have made, yeah, they should have made like to the the guy. Hunter's Lodge simple rather symbol rather than like yeah. it's a quest. Yep. Um, exactly. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm totally with you on that. Um, I like the way they handle fast travel in that. Uh, yes. that they kind of limit it at first, and then the further in you go, eventually it becomes like yeah, it becomes less, less it. probable until a point yeah. where you get any dynamics. Yeah, it's enjoyable. I like that it's not just jump across the map. It's jump across the map at a cost. It's a yeah. ra- relatively minor cost, but oh, yeah. still, there's a cost involved. And um, they, they, they've made uh, fighting with a bow really... Like, I use most of my tools in that game, and that is not a lot, not something I can say for a lot of games. Like, usually it's like, oh yeah, I'll just choose but, like these two weapons and win the game with it, but... There's a lot, of, especially as they introduce more and more different types of enemies that you're like, no, I need to like I need put this, down yeah. traps and I need to do this and I need to do that. Um, and they do a really good job of that. The, the amount of effort I put into fighting sawtooths, oh, the amount of prep work before I fight a sawtooth is the same. I, um, um, just fighting those fire things, they can also... Oh, yeah. I, yeah. I hate those big bastards yeah. that have not got a good enough weapon to take out yet. I've not got an element to fight it with, it's mostly just fighting with my bow because everything else is a fire explosive I've got right now and that's just useless against them. Uh, yeah, I think a couple pops in the on the back with the fire arrows. 
It it's might fire based help. enemy. It's weak to weak to, It's not weak to fire. Oh, it's a it's a tear damage that you're needing. Yeah, I don't I don't have any tear weapon. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, that game's. Oh, I want to go play, back and play that, but that's that's a good game. That is game done well. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So uh, I and checked the out. Story the... from well though, actually. Yeah. Oh yeah, no, the, the, because so, I, I'm I'm thinking right there. I'm actually invested in thinking out exactly what's happening to Eloy. There's yeah. a lot, of, like a lot of time you just go, oh, there's a thing. Oh, she's got a backstory. She came from somewhere, but they present it all really well from the death of is it Roth? I forgot his name. Daddy figure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Could be yeah, Joel. <laughs> yeah, it could be Joel Fraud. Yeah, but no, it's good. It's well done. Yeah. And um. I, I find that a lot of the incidental dialogue with minor characters is extremely well done. Dia- yeah. Like dialogue and voice acting, lip syncing not so much. Yeah, but yeah, the like, I, there's been several minor characters that I've been like, I really like this pair. I really want them to stay in this story, and like, they're just they've got their own little quirks and and things like that. That it just it does make the world feel a bit more real. Yeah, yeah, it's good. I enjoy it. I'm but looking yeah. forward to expanding into the wider world because yeah. there's a lot of like. I hope they go the way I want with it because there's very. It's obvious how restricted your clan and people have become, but there's other races that you meet who are more widely accepting of technology and all that kind of stuff. And it's, it's going to be interesting to see where the story arcs out to and if. You know, when the ending's going to be because of that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and it's it's funny because it's the weird. She's got this weird pride of where she comes from, but they're all the worst people. They yeah. are just the worst people. Yeah. <laughs> um. Cool. Cool. I'm glad. Glad you're firing in firing into that. Uh, I'll need to go back to it soon and um, play a bit more of it because now that you've got now you've got me thinking about it. <laughs> Aren't you but, supposed to be playing something else right now? Yeah, so I, I, I had over a month I've tried to, fi- tried to find a copy. So where of, did you wind up getting one then? Because I don't uh, really look the website that you ended up uh, All right, okay, suggesting right. to me, uh, it was out of stock for a long time, and then I randomly checked it one day, and it was in stock, and I ordered it immediately, and it came very quickly, actually, very quickly. Uh, so I picked up Persona Five finally. It's it's all right. Next topic. Um, <laughs> no, that game's. I'm, I'm maybe like three four hours in. So like barely. Still an early setup then. Yeah. I was going to um, say you've not even finished the intro yet then. Ah, <laughs> uh, pretty much. Pretty much. Yeah. Um, they're only just starting to give me free reign on like walking about dungeons and walking about the town. Um, that game's very Persona Four. Very uh, Persona. <laughs> very, very, very Persona. Um, Much Persona. That game's a lot. Darker than Persona. Yeah, even like by... the original setup of like why your character has been moved. So yeah, in Persona Four, your character is sent to live with his uncle and his. Yeah, because your your parents are like what going uh, abroad yeah, for a year yeah, or something, something yeah, like, yeah, something like that. Uh, and you go to the sleepy town, and you you know that's why you're there. In Persona Five. You stop a man trying to rape a woman, he falls over and sues you, you get a criminal record and get sent to live with some random stranger in Tokyo. Awesome. Yeah. Everyone in this game so far is a piece of shit. Seriously, as a piece of shit. The guy you the guy you go and live with, um, he says, Oh, so you were you were you in 
trajected yourself between a guy forcing himself on a woman, that's what you get for putting yourself in adult matters. And I was like, <laughs> so you get a piece of shit. But it'd be interesting to see if that was like what the actual character motivation was for that, or whether that's just a like literal so, yeah. translation. Uh, yeah, again, it's all like. Um, they seem to be doing a, a great job so far of building characters and already there's been some characters where i've been just, like man they are like why would you ever want to i don't normally let men sit in the front seat yep yeah, yeah. had that line yep um it's pen pat <laughs> with him, and he's he he has a real Miami Vice suit going on at yeah, one point. Totally does. Uh, it's the Miami Vice suit. Um, but yeah, it's just. And I'm, I'm, I'm also really excited to have like the knowledge that there are coffee curry shops in the world yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah uh, because want, there, there was there was one in Nampa that I took Therese deliberately past him and look, look at this. What? Why? <laughs> Wait, it's, a, it's, it's an actual thing. It's an actual thing. That's weird. Yeah, so I'm really that's excited to like, get the knowledge that those things actually exist out into yeah. the world. <laughs> yeah, because that's where you live. <laughs> um, yeah, so um, it's, it's interesting. I mean, for one thing, this game has a lot of style. Like, it looks really nice. Um, all the like UI and the, the design choices are, are really sleek and, and fit the kind of aesthetic of the game. Um, the game's sold in flashback, um, where you are arrested uh, at the start of the game and you're being interrogated and it's all told uh, in these flashbacks. Some of them are like, kind of like the start of Witcher 2 where you're in the prison cell and they ask you for what happened and what happened. I what have section. ever played Witcher 2. Oh, which is really good. Um, but yeah, every now and again it'll cut back to the interrogation room and you'll usually have either just a small bit of dialogue or like a dialogue choice to make. Uh, write your name or we'll beat the shit out of you. Yeah. <laughs> I said no. <laughs> And they were like, bad choice. <laughs> uh, they hit me. <laughs> Pretty bad. Um, so and... I've, I've been deliberately like trying to keep my knowledge of this to a minimum because it's one of those ones where I feel like this is the one that I'll probably play. And um, when that'll be, I don't know, but like I, I will pick it up when I get a PlayStation and like. Well, I have a disc copy. Yeah, that's what I want. I'm, I'm going to get a disc copy, but. Um, well, I'm getting more. But uh, yeah, like from what I've seen, like the only criticism I could kind of level at the game from what little I've seen is that like some of the texture work is kind of a bit iffy. Um, maybe I mean I'm still that, early that, on. That part, that's part of the parcel with like a game that was upscaled from like a PS3 game. And uh, like, so, see some of those cutscenes, you would not think. Oh yeah, totally. Upscaled. I mean, like, totally. game, like. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Like, and and even then, I think all the character models look real yep. sharp, real nice. Like I, because I was actually thinking about that statement uh, when I was playing the early parts, and I was like, I, I can see what, I can see where people would come from from that. But no, like I, I feel like this is a a, a PS4 game, and I feel that the everything looks really sharp. Yes, it could look better, but one thing I do like is once that game loads up, there's very little downtime. There's very little loading time. Um, How is the uh, frame rate and performance on that then? Is it just solid or is it... Solid. Uh, don't, don't ask me 3060. I'm terrible at that. Um, <laughs> but no, it, it looks like I've not had any hitches. I've not had any drops. I've not had any um, problems at all. With so that I game. think the uh, likelihood of this showing up on the Switch is somewhat unlikely then. <laughs> Ah, uh, the PS3 version, maybe. I Did mean, that even come out? Was, was that yeah. even a thing? Yeah, 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 yeah. Then, yeah, of course. <laughs> no, but in this country. Uh yeah. Well, I've, been, I've seen, one of the things I could see, like when I was in my quest to get this, is PS3. Do you want the PS3 version? No. Do you want the PS3 version? No. Do you want the normal version for the PS4, but it's ninety pounds? No. Um. But yeah, so you're, um, 
it's it's weird. So I'm ta- obviously I'm taking a lot of knowledge from Persona Four into this game, um, and it's it's weird because there's some things I'm like there's one thing that I think will happen later on in the game based on some knowledge I have from Persona Four, and I'm really interested to find out if I'm right. The cops did it. <laughs> and if I'm wrong, I will I'll just find it a weird choice that they made. Um, and I'm not I don't want to get too much into that because that's besides the point. But um looking at this compared to Persona 4, it's very, very similar, but all the little changes they've made have been for the better. And then there's, you know, it's a different setting, it's um there are there is other stuff to it, uh, but they've kept that core of Persona Four, and probably Persona Three from that point, um, and just improved upon it. I really like the way they've done the battle menu. Um, it's not just a listed menu anymore. Each button does a different thing. So triangles your skills and personas. Circle defends. Square does some like Square uses items and. It's just it all looks really sleek and yeah, it's really cool the way that like each option kind of like comes out of your character as well. Like, yeah, like... yeah, um, and it's it, it all fits this aesthetic of um, so you're what you're called a fan, phantom thieves. So in Persona Four, you go in and you destroy the evil version of the person whose dungeon it is. In this one, um, you go in and you're stealing their darkest desires. Uh, So I've not actually got to the point where I do that yet, obviously, because it's a JRPG. Um, But I'm assuming they laid the groundwork for who you're going after, though. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Like I, I I think I'm just. uh, (laughs) It's funny because the the structure of how this game is going is so so similar to persona 4 it's like well you wait till it rains and then you watch the midnight channel and then it's it's more the structure of the like of how that intro started in persona 4 so you start going to school you went to school there's a dead body you you meet what but it's more like you meet one person that person becomes your friend you and that person find out this world you're both confused by it then a third person comes in and kind of me- messes things up, and you have to go and help them. Like it's real. Like, did they drive their bike into it like a trash can, and then you have to? Build I, I was, can. I was waiting for it. I was seriously waiting for that moment, and it's especially weird because that person sounds unbelievably like Yosuke. So you're playing with the English VO then? Yeah, yeah, okay. uh, and it's great so far. Um, the voice acting's fantastic. Um, I mean, I'm not a person that plays games in Japanese anyway. Um, but I would have absolutely no problem. Like, it's the voice acting's fantastic. Um, it really, really is. Uh, it is still creepy how much your your Yosuke character sounds like Yosuke, and is not the actor I thoroughly checked <laughs> to make sure it wasn't. Um, yeah, so. Uh, so good. So good. I've not joined Worth a club yet. There's batting cages next to my house. I'm really excited about them. Uh, I found the mascot. Like, you know, it's a Persona game. Um, have, you, have you gone to Shibuya yet? Yeah. 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 It's like one of the, yeah, it's like one of the, it's a fucking maze. Dude, dude like going through um, actual Shibuya. Shibuya. Train st- Shinjuku train station is one of the most terrifying experiences in the world. Yeah. Yes, it is. I, I was late. I was late for school, and I was trying to get through there, and I was like, I don't know where I'm going. Japanese like, train stations. Like, and all the signs were in Japanese. There's like underground labyrinths as well, like full yep. of like shops and stuff. It's terrifying if yeah, you get yeah. lost. <laughs> yeah, I remember when I first got in there. That was bloody freaky as hell. That's the one that's the biggest train station in the world, isn't it? Yep. Yep. Yeah. And it's got like fifty exits or something like yeah. that. Yeah, and each one like it's like really difficult to get to another one if you go out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I, yeah, it's a little bit intimidating. Uh, again, coming from Persona Four is 
it was one sleepy town. That's yeah, it. That's totally. all I had to walk about. Yep. I have, I have to take two trains to get to school in the morning. That's not cool. Hey, in Japan, that's doing. not an issue. Remember, there's like one every like three minutes or something. So you don't need to worry. It's, it's, it's more about when this game opens up. Yeah. How many different places am I going to have to go yeah, to? Yeah, that's, that's, to it. Oh, yeah, no, fine. absolutely, absolutely. I, I already, it's. I mean, you know, it's not like. I go to one place and it's eight square miles of like it's it, it's just a different way of doing it and it looks smart. Once you get lost um, in the train system, have to ask a person how to get somewhere and don't speak the language. You're fine. Don't worry. <laughs> but yeah, um, I never really found getting lost a problem. It was all relatively easy to get around. Well, and that's yeah, that's, to, that's Tokyo. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Tokyo is not a problem because most people will speak English there. If you need to ask, like no, if I you mean, are like in the ass I mean, end like, of nowhere. I mean, like <laughs> I never had to ask anyone how to get to anywhere. The only thing that was super confusing was the first time I went to Shinjuku train station and being like, "Oh my god, everything's so colorful and bright, and there's symbols everywhere. I can understand half of this because I didn't pay much attention to the Japanese class that I took." As it's the thing about Tokyo is as long as you follow the JR line, you can get to most places. Um, yeah. Like so, it's once you get outside of the the tourist hub, that's that's when you need to start worrying. But yeah, like the main the main thing that freaked me out was just like the undergroundness and the size of uh, Shinjuku train station. That was that's like I still get panicky thinking about it. Very yeah. um, anyway, back to the Yeah, yeah, um, but yeah, it's. They are I, I, Persona Four to like you know they touched upon a lot of different themes. Um, Kanji dealing with his sexuality, Naoto dealing with her gender. This one seems to be like they're go like they're going for it a lot more. Um, not that they're they were light subjects to tackle before, but you know considering you started <laughs> by. Yeah, sexual assault is a good way to start the game. Yeah, uh, yeah, and then I've already had themes of suicide, themes of physical abuse, themes of, like, it's really... It's not as breezy as the first one, as the last one was. Um, and I, I'm very interested to see how they handle that, um, because they are not easy subjects to tackle. Well, you know, it's the fifth one, so it's the dark middle chapter. So. Yeah, uh-huh. Um, and then Persona 9, all the choices that you made don't actually come together. Um, How did you destroy the Rachni Hive? Yeah, that's the... Yeah. With my Persona. Um, Shoot yourself in the head, and then... Yeah. yeah. Uh, no, in this one, um, because you're a phantom thief... Uh, when you activate the persona for the first time, a mask, like a sort of like masquerade mask comes on, and the first thing every single person tries to do is rip it off their face, resulting in a lot of blood. I saw that and was oh, like, wait, oh, is this a thing that happens regularly? Uh, I mean, it's the same way that um, shooting yourself in the head does regularly. Right, the okay. first time it happens, it's super over the top, and then after that, it's kind of like, they don't actually go full force and because it's like every time you summon a new persona um yeah the the way you get personas is different and i'm again i've only picked up four um but instead of uh you fought enemies and then you would get cards from those enemies essentially uh, and four and this one um like in four if you get all the enemies down, you get a chance to do an all-out attack. Like everyone jumps in, piles on. And this one, you get also the other option of talking to the enemies, uh, and you can either demand money or items from them, and they'll leave, uh, or you can ask them to join you. At which point they'll start chatting with you. And if they like your responses, they will join your team. So I don't know if you've like been following the stuff, but that stuff is in like the menu somewhere that will straight up just tell you what each conversation option does. Oh, really? Yeah, 
like um, that apparently that's super helpful to find out. And it's in the game; they just don't broadcast it for some reason. Yeah, I've, I've had maybe like sixty-four A success rate with that. Um, only a couple that I've uh, not managed. And yeah, it's it, like it's it's an interesting way to do it. Um, I I just don't know if I like it more or less than the other system. Um, but yeah, it's they seem to have added a lot to what that what the Persona series has been, and again, they're in terms of writing and world building and uh, voice acting. It's all top notch again. Um, basically, after we do this podcast, my entire day is going to be spent playing Persona. Uh, and I'm so I, surprised by that. I have no problems with that. Shut the curtains, getting the sun out of the way. <laughs> Um, but yeah, no, it's it's excellent so far. Um, I was I've also played. Uh, I've been playing a bit more Soma. All right. Okay. Yeah. So uh, after Resident Evil Seven, um, me and uh, friend Show Donnie went back. Uh, we'd started Soma, and then fell off it, and now we're we're going to try and make our way through it. So no Outlast two then for you. Uh, that will be next. That will be after okay. so. Um, I d- I don't know how I feel about Soma. Um, for that one, is what I hear from a lot of people who have played Soma. It's like it's, it starts off really good. Starts off really a very sharp, really quick drop and going. Oh, well. I've heard, so- I've heard there's the twist that is the thing about this game, and then from there it kind of peters off. <laughs> The twist happens. I mean, the I I don't think the t- twist has happened, but they've been telegraphing it so heavily. Uh, I mean, I I knew what that twist was, or at least one of the twists were going in, um, just for how long it's been since that game came out and yeah, yeah, playing totally. it, um, and yeah, like that is super telegraphed. <laughs> Um, all the way through the game, uh, but I am real. I'm really enjoying the the kind of world building and the and the story. What I'm not enjoying is that I found out that the best way to get through that game is stare at the walls and hug the corners. Uh, the enemy like, and that's really unfortunate because I tried. I tried so hard doing it the normal way, uh, of you know taking my time, working my way through the rooms, trying to uh, like keep an eye on the enemies and, and follow their routes so that I could sneak around them. Anytime you look at an enemy, or specific this one specific enemy uh, that appears to be the kind of proper bad guy in it, uh, there are some other monsters that just kind of lumber on their routes. Them I had no problem with, but this specific one who appears to be able to teleport uh, with, like kind of Slender Man style, which is never fun. Anytime you look at them, you're vi- you start losing the game essentially, and it starts noticing you, which just makes it really hard to keep a track of where it is and like what you're doing. So can you just like walk around it but facing the other way? Yep. So hug the corners, face the wall, and it'll never ever ever touch you. Like seriously, wow. like I've had it like here, and it will just walk away. Just don't look at like. That seems like a glaring oversight. Uh, it seems like a really shitty way to play a game because that game looks nice. The walls don't. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, it's so cumbersome. Like just to, and it's not fun. Like that is not a fun way to play that. Play a game. And I really, really wanted to play it the way it should be played, of like the kind of way like Alien is, uh, where you're 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 making sure you know where the enemy is and you're trying to avoid it. Shit might go bad, but you know you you ha- you might have to run or you may have to do this. Nah, just because the moment you start looking at them, basically game over. Uh, or you stay at the wall for a while, hear the scream, and the screaming goes away, and you look back and you have no idea where the thing is anymore. And at that point, you're left to blindly wander round corners, and then it's too late because you've walked around a corner right into the thing. Um, literally, like, 
I rounded a corner that I was standing in the last time I properly checked just by facing the wall and curving round and totally fine. Didn't make the game fun, but it got past it. Um, and again, it's it's um, it's the fr frictional games um, who made um, what's it called Amnesia, uh, the first Amnesia, and just like they're good at world building, they're good at like these little notes and these little like, but I can't. I can't get to them, like, I can't get to the ones that aren't in completely safe areas because any time I spend any amount of uh, time in a room that most likely I'm going to have a problem with this big fucking bastard behind me. And there's um, no combat in the game, is there? It's just no, like, no. just a void. Uh, yeah, you're avoid just, this. it's amnesia, but not. Um, so yeah, I, I, I really want to get through it for the story, um, but chances are when we pick up Outlast, that will be kind of dropped by the wayside, um, which is a shame because there's a, there is a lot of like about it. Unfortunately, the core gameplay is not one of the things. Um, so yeah, it's unfortunate. Um, what else have we been playing? I started a D&D campaign. Hey. Uh, that I'm DMing. That's interesting. It's been, a, it's been a long, long time in the making, and I'm looking forward to getting done one full session so far, and looking forward to really getting stuck into that. It's been a long time since I played D&D. I really like D&D. Good fun. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, anything else from you guys? Nothing. Nothing really really more. Cool. We move on to some news. News. Uh, yeah. We'll start off with a huge lie. Uh, Alan Wake, uh, developer's next game, gathers pace. Um, th there are some people that have said that it might be at another Alan Wake game, and it's not because there's never going to be another Alan Wake game because the world hates me. Yes. Yeah, like, what publisher was involved in this? I can't even remember. Was it Five Hundred Five? Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, like, 505 don't have a good name in the industry. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see what that <coughs> is. Apparently it's an Earth third person action story-driven game. Uh, so, I don't know. I, I would much prefer an Alan Wake, Wake 2. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I know those guys are probably itching to do something else. <sighs> but it depends on how big that studio is at this point. I mean, they might have multiple projects in the works. Um, you know, it just depends on where the money's coming from. Well, they've, they, I mean, they've definitely got um, yeah, they, they announced um, I don't know if that'll be the full budget, but it's weird that budget stuff's coming out. That doesn't usually happen with uh, uh, video games, but yeah, it's uh, what, 6.5 million? Yeah, so we're there. I, th I think it's just trying to get like additional investment or something, maybe. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like... Uh, that, that'll just be the publishing, like you know what the publishers thrown in, um, but yeah, Quantum Break received so, like Quantum Break was all right. I I enjoyed it. It yeah, was it, it didn't set the world on fire, but um, I think I think it's telling that the the most interesting thing about that game is the Alan Wake teaser in it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like it, I I enjoyed what I played. It yeah. was all right. Um, th those guys have always at least done interesting things. Um, so it'll be it'll be interesting to see what what they come up with, um, what route they go. Um, code name Project Seven. Yeah, Project Seven. Do you think we'll ever get an Alan Wake Two? Nope. <sighs> Sorry, Ali. I don't know. <laughs> Mark, like Phil Spencer's been out there saying like they're gonna throw more money at projects and do more risky things. Like what's risk more riskier than an Alan Wake too? Um, I don't know. It, it'd be nice. It'd be real fucking nice. Cause do you know what's more risky than an Alan Wake too? Is that Dark Siders three? <laughs> oh, the game you said would never happen. <laughs> yeah. No, it's never gonna happen. Hey, mate. 
it's not gonna happen. Uh, except for um, Darksiders three screenshots got leaked, and then THQ Nordic confirmed the project. So what what happened was that um, a, a listing appeared on Amazon with uh, these screenshots attached. Uh, and then, like a few hours later, they kind of had to leak the trail. Well, I think there was like a, a piece uh, by IGN, so uh, they must have yep. had like a deal in the works or something. Um, they released a trailer not too long after that, uh, but that trailer is entirely CG. So yeah, I don't know. Well, um, I, I don't, it looks like it's um, twenty eighteen. They're looking yep. at. Uh, so there was a provisional date on the Amazon listing of like December thirty first, twenty eighteen. Um, but obviously, I'm assuming it'll launch before then. Um, yeah. Just a case of a what that game is because they've tried to do like a different style for each one so far. So is this going to be like your bayonetta style combat type is thing? Just because is that just because you play as Fury, the female horseman? Yeah, with a whip, and magic whip. apparently. A whip and magic. Uh, I've not seen this trailer yet. Um, is it just a teaser, I take it? Yeah, the trailer's not exactly great. You know, it's sad. Uh, it's just war, like, chained up. So obviously this is set before the first Darksiders. Oh, no, where's Death? Which, uh, well, Death was in a different place, if you remember Darksiders 2. Um, but, like, the main thing that they have been building towards since the first one of those games was the fucking end of that game. Uh huh. And it so feels like we're going to get this like five games down the line. Prequel time? Prequel time. Prequel time. Yeah. It's like they're releasing Mass Effect Andromeda before Mass Effect 3. What? Yeah. Anyway. Uh, are, are you looking forward to another Darksiders? Uh, I'd be interested to see what it was. Um, I thought that Darksiders 2 was kind of a letdown. Uh huh. Um, there were interesting That's things about that. But, That's uh, also but weird to say. That uh, last boss battle was... Um... Hey, remember the entire Earth section of Darksiders 2? No. Th oh, wait, is that the bit of the angels? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I uh -huh. remember that. When you have to like get those guns and walk forward and shoot things and there were a lot of rolling of balls i remember that <clears throat> a lot of ball puzzles yeah. um and a lot of difficult difficulty spikes that came out of nowhere as well everything's and everything's in threes everything everything yeah. is in threes arms heads everything. quests uh so yeah it's uh made by the original darksiders team uh, who founded a new studio called Gunfire Games. Yeah, because who was it before? Was it Raven Studios that did a lot of the uh, Warhammer Vigil. stuff? Vigil. A oh, Vigil, yeah, because they, they, went into, they went on to do Warhammer Online, and then... And um, now they are... Now they're, now they're Gunfire Games. Yep. Uh, Mark, I'm going to let you take this one just to make you feel worse. Um, because Zelda Breath of the Wild's first DLC got detailed. Yeah, I actually you really, are I actually want to buy it. Um, are, you, are you ready? Are you ready for the DLC? Yeah, I mean, are Mark you, has been ceaselessly playing it. He is a pro. Yeah. He's mostly completed the campaign. It's really just a few side quests and temples to mop up at this point. I know. I, all I've done, I mean, all I've heard is you just sitting there ready with your Joy-Con in hands, waiting for the... I've got two. I've got two Joy-Cons. So, oh, do you? Yeah. Fucking... Yeah, you really so... really get a Switch to go with them. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> like... <laughs> so, yeah, there is a bunch of new stuff for Zelda. Um, the new map feature that they were talking about previously is uh, something called the Hero's Path. Uh -huh. And it can retroactively show your last 200 hours worth of movement on the map. Um... They've also talked about like uh, an amulet that allows you to set down a custom fast travel point. Um, there's new costumes, new weapons, new armor. Um, there's a new thing called the Trial of the Master Quest. That's Master Sword or something. Trial, you... trial of the Sword. Trial of the Sword that allows you to unlock the Master Sword's true power. Um, I won't go into what that probably entails with the way the Master Sword works because it's probably still quite spoilers at this point. Um, but you can probably hazard a guess as to what that does. 
Uh, and hard mode. Yep, and hard mode sounds a bit like a whiff, to be honest. Like en uh, enemies have like regenerating health; they're always like one level above what they are in normal mode. Um, I hope there's more to it than that. But you'll also find hidden treasures floating in the sky. Yep. So there are barges and stuff just floating about, apparently. <laughs> um, well, I think a lot of that sounds like absolute bullshit. <laughs> Mainly the hero's path thing. Why? I think it'd be super interesting to see that on the map. Ah, uh -huh, I do think it would be super interesting to see that on the map. Give me five pounds. Yep. So <laughs> one, one of the three, the, the free pieces of uh, DLC that they added was, which actually went live this week, was the they added the ability to have the dual audio. So if you wanted the Japanese audio, that thing is live and free. Awesome. So uh, given how poor some of the voice acting is in that game, might be worth switching that over. But you know, a lot harder to sell bad Japanese voice acting than bad English voice yeah, exactly, acting. Exactly, exactly. Um, but you know, I haven't been able to test any of that because I'm currently without my goddamn switch. So are you? You should have mentioned that earlier. In yeah, the right. I know. Yeah. What happened, man? Like, I thought you had a Switch for, like, the last few months. Yep. Do you know what you, know what you should have just done? Is go out, buy another Switch, and then return it when uh, you get yours back. Are you going to do that if it's faulty, I think? No, it's at the store. Why? Yeah. Nah. Where returns policy. That's not the only piece of Switch news we have on there. The Hero's Path is bullshit that you have to pay for it. Ridiculous. Ridiculous. Um, the switch shifted a lot of units. Yeah, almost it's, three million units yeah, in the space of um, the first month. Yeah, two point seven four million units, which is a lot. Yep. Um, yeah, they uh, what they'd estimated about two million, and that's kind of what they produced, doesn't it? Uh, which is why they had the situation where they were having to physically ship like switches over in aircraft. Yeah. Which essentially added forty dollars like cost to each unit as they were shipping um, across. So my favorite uh, thing about this though is that two hundred thousand more copies of Zelda have sold than there are switches. Yep. Yeah. So what people would I will I will buy this game and eventually get a Switch. Yeah, I, I know plenty of people that have done that in the past. I'm sure Mark's done that with at least one game. I'm going Probably. to get. I don't have this console yet, but I'm going to get this game, and it might have been on Shark Two. I was really tempted to do that with the collector's edition of Breath of the Wild, but then couldn't get it anywhere. Yeah. So I decided to go well. So I'll find the normal version. But yeah. Um. And as well as the 2.76 million copies of Breath of the Wild that have been sold on Switch, there's been an additional, let's see if I can figure this out math-wise, 1.08 million copies sold for the Wii U. Yeah, which is quite surprising. Yeah, just over a million copies sold for the Wii U, which I don't think I'd be saying that. <clears throat> um... I don't think it's too unreasonable that people can't get a hold of the console that they're just going to buy it for the one they do have, or they decide, I don't want that new console because it only oh, has no, one I, game I, that I want to play. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I'm just more shocked at the Wii U version. So. You know, there are people out there with Wii U's, not that many, but. Uh, apparently, <laughs> there's, there's uh, 1.08 million of them. Um. <clears throat> They did not disclose the uh, sales of One Two Switch, um, <laughs> though, <laughs> though Nintendo did say that the game is generating buzz. Um, yeah. Yeah, well, you, so, guys, you guys yeah. will hopefully have the opportunity to try that around E three time. Um, One Two Switch. Yep, I forgot my yeah. Switch back. So hopefully, have you got yeah. enough uh, controllers and stuff? Yeah, you, like you can only use two controllers with that game. Oh, so, really? Yeah, I'm, I'm at a... Uh, weirdly, of all the games, that is the one that I kind of want to try out. Um, obviously, I want, but obviously, I want to play Zelda, but I want to try out uh, one to Switch. Um, and Mario Kart's good, doing gangbusters as well, apparently. Apparently, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe is the fastest-selling version of Mario Kart ever. 
Which is fucking crazy. Yeah, considering that game sold out. What a fucking copy, um, copies. Over but also, because this like is a new console that is oh, yeah, no, stream, yeah, supply right. like string const constricted. Um, yeah, they, they, so yeah. yeah. Switch withdrawal. Um, yeah, so it seems like uh, Nintendo's had a pretty good quarter. Yep. And they're um, like estimating I mean, 10 million units will be sold by the end of the year. So. Yep. Um, they also expect to shift another 6 million 3DSs. Uh, and that is because they have just announced a new 2DS XL. Hey, remember it. when they said they were done? Bigger 2DS. Done. Bigger 2DS. Well, it's, it's not that it's a bigger 2DS. It's, it's it's like a clamshell 2DS this time around. Oh, is yeah. it? I, I, no, yeah, I, like, I just... so, so the original 2DS was this weird thing that you can fold in on itself. Yeah, it was, it was like a... It was like a... I don't know what are they call it. It was essentially like a tablet, but with two screens on it. It was yeah. like a fucking speaking spell. Yeah, yeah it was, yeah. you know, kitty tablet type thing um so now they, they've put it in this weird clamshell thing and like some of them actually look all right like are you gonna yeah. pick up a 2ds now no i'm not i've still got my regular 3ds that yeah i've still got my launch 3ds and it's doing fine yeah i don't know same. where it is but it's doing fine mine is on my shelf <laughs> right there. i don't know where it is but i'm assuming it's fine yeah, yeah. um and the in the same fashion of nintendo's releasing of Something DS, something DS XL. I'm going to wait for the Switch XL and hope that it doesn't break as much. Well, to be fair, mine seems to be the only one that's broken. Are they all of them? <laughs> um, yeah. You know, they're waiting, case, for brand, they're waiting for brand new parts, so it's not even like. Yeah, it's just some half fast job. Parts, that's because all the other parts are going to build all the ones that they didn't build beforehand <laughs> for people to get. Yeah. Man, I hope I get something out of that. <laughs> I would, I would be complaining heartily. And that's that's where I'm at right now. Where I'm just like, you know what? Fucking hurry it's up. Like point. I would just point out the fact that your customer care department has had my switch longer than I have. That's yeah. Fucking ridiculous. This thing cost me three hundred and fifty pound. That is not an insignificant amount of money for a company that has never produced a console anywhere near that price. Their most expensive thing prior to that was what the 3DS at like 120 pound or something when it came out. Are you kidding? Like, the 3DS was 250. Was it? Yeah. yeah. That's why we really? got our awesome free games, Darren. Really? Remember yep. they dropped the price? Holy shit! <laughs> yes, remember they sent public a Remember when there was like proper written apologies from the no. head of the company? I didn't care about the 3DS when it first came out. I remember. Hey, you I were remember. at that event just like me, and Mark. Yep. Yeah, I was. Um. <laughs> so yeah, uh, Atlas is uh, apparently easing up on Persona Five streaming restrictions, um, which is all well and good. One thing I did forget to say about Persona Five that's really pissing me off. Um, the amount of times it comes up and says cannot take screenshot here especially when I've not tried to take a screenshot uh, it'll just randomly pop up at certain points I mean there's a usually at certain points in games that will come up and say you can't do any recording on this scene but yep. for some reason it just comes up and says you can't take a screenshot you can't take a screenshot by the way you can't take a screenshot and it's especially annoying when I do want to take a screenshot of something that is really cool that's going on in that game. Because uh, the, sh the share button is just straight up disabled, isn't it? Like, just doesn't let you do anything? I've taken screenshots on it. But at certain very specific, like... Oh, okay. It's just that there's a lot of times where you cannot take screenshots in this game. Either that or I'll go and check the screenshots and I'll say, we cannot display this. Um, yeah, it's... It's annoying because there's a lot of real cool visuals, real fun dialogue that I'm like, oh, I want to share this with my friends. And then, no. And I was oh, like, no, not today. 
Yeah, there was one that I was like, oh, this will make a really good uh, thumbnail for the podcast. No, it won't, because I fucking can't take a screenshot. No, Unless you want a to... camera. <laughs> well, that's what I did. <laughs> um, yeah, that's... I understand that they want to like keep this story secret and have everyone enjoy it, but no, it's it's ridiculous. Well, clearly, um, they haven't looked on YouTube because like the endings are all up there and have been mm-hmm. since the Japanese launch. Uh, so yeah, uh, they've lifted the ninety-minute limit for streaming the game. Uh, they've also uh, eased up on um, when the the streaming sections will so before uh, i think it was like off. april or something and now they pushed uh, it back to like november july uh <laughs> it began, the game begins in april so that would be really right. bad uh it's because it's a uh, japanese school year right um so yeah it's a uh, it was originally july and they've moved it forward to i think yeah november um but yeah it's just it's They'll cave I mean, at some point, and then, like... It's funny because, I mean, Persona 5 took off in a way that no one really expected. Like, the fact that I've not been able to find a copy of this game for a month is shocking. No, and, and I don't mean shocking in a bad way. I mean, just, like, my mind was blown. Like, if I asked people, like, when Persona 4 came out, if they'd ever heard of this game, chances are no. Um, and then they're, like, because Persona 4 took off in a big way, that you've got like the fighting game, the dancing game, you know. Oh yeah, they released those, didn't they? Yeah, they re- and then apparently the fighting game is pretty good. Um, and then they released Persona Four Golden, and I'm like, I'm not saying that everyone will know what Persona Five is. Uh, you know, I can't get it in ASDA or Tesco or something like that because that's you not get an Amazon at the moment. But yeah, <laughs> but but they would not they, like they wouldn't even consider it in those places. And I'm assuming, see when it drops down to like. 30 quid or 20 quid, th- that's when, like, Asda and that will bring it in. It's you're not you're that. a seven that will ever drop like that, because I think they'll probably True. still have exactly. a lot of well, been, Yeah, you're right with the with how hard it's been to find that that game will keep its value. Yep. But one thing you want to do is a game that's, you know, especially with a, a Western audience and such a Japanese game, that you want to get it out there. You want to show how many people are enjoying and loving this game. And then they're like, nah, you're not allowed to show any of this game. Don't even show, hey, don't show the cover to your friend. Don't show the cover to your friend. He can get his own copy. Um, yeah, it's it's weird because Japan has this weird like relationship with the internet where they think really? the internet is mostly <laughs> bad. Um, so I, th- I think they're still trying to overcome that. Like there are, like YouTube, YouTube is a big thing over there now. Um, it didn't used to be, but like straight up, like on the um, immigration sheet, one of the options is YouTube streamer. Yeah. Like not not even joking. Yeah. Um, like what you what you're coming here to do? Oh, I'm a YouTube streamer. Yeah, I'm a YouTuber. That's, like, yeah. um, so like, what Japan perceives as the internet is like starting to change. Hello, cat. Uh-huh. Um, and. Like it will probably take a little bit longer uh, for that to really change. I, she's just like the, behind the monitor. Um, <laughs> it's just the fact that the face just appeared in from the side. It's always yeah. on the go in this. Place. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, like so, it's probably gonna take a little while for Japan's because the. This is Atlas. This isn't Sega. I feel like if this was Sega, you wouldn't have this much issue because uh, there's a lot of streamers and YouTubers who are working their way through like Yakuza at the moment. Um, Although Puyo Puyo Tetris did have this weird like online embargo thing in Japan only. So Mm -hmm. I I don't know. It's it's a bit hit and miss. Um, I know a lot of people have been like demonstrating like Nier and stuff like that. Um, and we'll probably see as this generation goes on, like a, a bigger shift uh, towards that sort of stuff. But it's going to take a while. I, I give it like a few months, and Atlas will have dropped these restrictions already. Yeah. Uh, I, the thing is, I don't know. I, I, I've n- never heard of anyone changing the way screenshots and saved clips work. Uh, so I don't think that's going to go away. 
Um, there, there was another game. What was it? Because it just straight up disabled it. Um, I can't. I can't remember what it was. I I, I, I vaguely remember that that there was yeah. one that was just like, nope, can't do anything. Yep. Um, and it's a shame because that's like it's such a nice looking game. It's such a nice looking game, and it is a game that I would want to screenshot. Like I don't screenshot a lot of games. It's usually like dumb stuff or when something breaks. But this is actually a game where I'd be like, no, I like that moment. I want to like save it or like. This visual's really cool, um, and it's so. I've I've had more cases where it just comes up and says no, nah. um, and it's in bits that you would like. I'm not even talking like you know cutscenes or um, Call of Duty Advanced like, Warfare. That was the other yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm I'm not talking like cutscenes or important plot points or it's like just straight on. I'm like standing in a corridor or like, like bits that we you would think they're so so uh, innocuous that but that's how much story there is in persona 5 alley that every single piece and every single corridor is going to fulfill some level of story yeah so even yeah. just showing this garbage can next to you there's like serious spoilers so that's yeah because there's a uh, uh, you seem to be best friends ro rolling about in it. yeah apparently bandai's tales of zestra is also fully disabled for screenshots Okay. Yeah. I've heard that new Tales game's pretty good. I've heard a lot of the Tales games are pretty good. I've only played like five minutes of one. I don't. I don't think I've even played that much of a Tales game. Man, if only we knew someone who'd played a bunch of Tales games that used to do a podcast. I know, right? I tried getting him on recently as well, and he was like, "Yeah, oh. fucking idiot." <laughs> uh, <laughs> Um, Steam is dealing with 50,000 refund requests a day. A day! Is that on No Man's Sky? Yeah. Still. It's backlog. Yep. Um, uh, yeah. Um, it's, it's really annoying because now that I've got this computer that can run games, um, I picked up a Ziggurat. Uh, that's the kind of... You like to say that on the internet? Uh, that's the kind of wizard terror of guns game. So Stephen King. <laughs> I hate you so much. Bring the cat back. <laughs> I prefer the cat. Um, She's facing the other way now. It's not going to happen. <laughs> uh, and that runs really well. Really nice. Looks gorgeous. Um, see, trying to find anything in the Steam store is a nightmare. Yep. It's the worst experience ever. Ever. That's I think it said like changes are on the way for Steam just now, aren't they? Like was that? I think we said changes are on the way for the way the Steam store works just I now. I hope so. Um I like I really do understand that uh it's a booming time for indie development and that is very hard to get noticed in general with games, uh to try and get people to buy them or to even try them. But that Steam store is so full of garbage uh, that it just makes like see when there's a sale on and you act like the usual thing I would do is like let right price low to high let's see what like let's see what's going cheap you can't do that anymore because you're literally going through about four or five pages of free games before you get into anything and then yeah, it's and like the that's another for games yeah. and the, the, the small DLC packs like oh you can buy. Two thousand silver coins for a game, blah blah blah, for twelve yep. pence. I don't and care. Then, and then after that, you've got the the games that people have, like the the games that shouldn't be on Steam. I'm not the fun parts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not trying to be overly critical of them because you know, like it is good that people are making games and trying to put them out, but there does need to be a bar there that. You just can't put out garbage. So and Therese a was lot of garbage on there. So Therese was working on a like a project for uni where she had to like put a poster up about what Steam is, and I was like, she's like, one of the disadvantages of Steam was like, well, it's full of anime bullshit at the moment, which like you know like visual novel games like every five seconds. Mm -hmm. yep. And she's like, well, they they kind of removed that. And I was like, yeah, supposedly. And then like she logged in, it was just like a strip, just like fucking anime sale. 
which I thought was kind of hilarious. Yeah. Um. Yeah. It's it's it, it's a mess, and it's really put me off using Steam. Um. I'm okay with all of it being there, but they just need to improve the filtering system. Like, you know, if the game has this tag, then don't even bother showing it. Even the tag system, though, is so bad. Like, I can't... For one, it's so hard to just... I don't know. They just need they just need massive, big changes with Steam now that, that it's such a mess. Uh, I try and look for tags, and it's useless. Oh, no, um, I'm not saying, you know, use the existing tag system or something. I just mean something oh, like yeah. tags would be a good idea. Yeah, just, like, have yeah. something in there that says, you know, if the game... For instance, just because tags are already a thing, if it says it's anime, I don't want to see it. If it yeah. Or like, you know, if other players report that it is it's okay. bad and it contains this thing, I never want to see it. Yeah. You know, some kind of conditional statements or even just the basic kind of way that you filter down choices on, like, see when you find something on Yeah, a, bit, a so, better filtering system. Yeah, something like, Both you know... Both on their end. Yeah, because like, so, you know, I'm going to buy a hard drive on Amazon. I won't look at the ones that are less than, like, 2 gig. So I yeah. filter out everything that is 2 gig in a box. I filter out to only 2 gig in a box. Something like that, you know. You know anything that is action and a box. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, yeah, so um, uh, they must be taking this serious then. So, so the reason uh, for this was, like, they're trying to be more transparent of what customer yeah. service does. <laughs> Um, and that's them showing that the majority of their work is simply dealing with these refunds. Yeah, to put that in perspective, uh, they received um, 49,119 uh, re refund requests over 24 hours, and in the same period, all other requests combined were 16,535. Which is fucking crazy. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's, I think Steam's going to have an interesting year, uh, or two, uh, just trying to sort themselves out. Um, cause I don't think that service is as good as it was a couple of years ago. Yeah. Um, I, one, I mean, definitely bringing in refunds is a great thing. Um, Especially with the way PC, some PC ports have gone over the last yeah. while, yeah. Um, having having a robust reef and fair. I'm not. I'm not saying that everyone should be able to return every game ever. Uh, having a, a robust and fair uh, refund system uh, is a big step, but they've got a lot of other big steps to go before I start feeling comfortable using Steam again. But it's whenever I go on Steam, I'm always looking for something specifically, as opposed to just browsing. Like I can't remember the last time I went on Steam to browse. That's fair. Um, it's it's um, I've done it's, a few times, but yeah, I prefer looking for specific things as well. I like to browse every now and again. Steam does enough sales that, and enough things go on sale that sometimes you can pick out a bargain uh, that you didn't expect. Uh, but that's again a lot more difficult. Uh, now because of how much clutter there is. Um, yep. Is that all we've got for news? Uh, pretty much. We're heading into E3, so there's kind of a lull at the we moment. Are. Um, it's going to be... Yeah, get start playing those games, guys, because you're not going to have a lot of time. So, uh, What is, you guys got planned for this week? Uh, yeah. Try and get caught up in gaming. <laughs> Always playing prey if I can get time. Yeah, let me know how that is. I wanna, yeah. I wanna see what that's like. Um, still waiting for Injustice Two. That's a couple of weeks away. Yeah. Um, aside from that, I'll be chasing up my Switch this week. I think it's um, interesting that Injustice Two is even out yet, and they're already announcing other additional characters. So the reason they had to do that is because one of the versions of the game comes with like character pack one. Right. Um, that game went gold a while ago. Uh, so that this is just additional stuff. I think it's supposed to could, like drop like a week or so after launch. Um, but yeah, they've like outlined three character packs. First one featuring Starfire, Red Hood, and Sub Zero. Yep. What yeah. did you think of the Joker reveal? I think that 
character design's real shitty, but, you know. What do you mean? It's bladded ghetto. Yeah. And it's also not Mark Hamill doing... It's a doing pretty good... Voice. It's a pretty good... Uh, voice though like it's so it's it's one of the um animated movie voices right. it's not um it's not mark hamill but they've yeah, still got I think, I think he's a bit busy at the moment yeah probably yep um, surprise me no i like i thought the voice was was pretty good uh, i think the design is a bit it's not as bad Shit. it's not as bad Garbage. as it's not as bad as jared little's joker it's it's version of it. <laughs> is it does he have the word broken or twisted or no, he has something written across his stomach. Like he has Aww. something like yeah, like totally. Like it's it is that bad. Like if you go back and look at it. Um, but they've the thing is like there's there's been such a big like I don't know like hype around it. But like Joker was in the first one, and mm-hmm. by the looks of things, that's the exact same move set they had in the first one. So oh. I don't know. Um, I'll be interested to play that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, fighting games. I'm, I'm interested to hear what you had to say because you really enjoyed the first one, didn't you? Yeah, I, I really like the story mode yeah. and Justice was really good. Um, I liked playing against Dave and I think I played a bit against you, Darren, as well. Didn't I? Yeah, we played a few games, yeah. Yeah, um, so be interested. I need to pick up a couple of controllers because my controllers aren't fight game ready at the moment. Um, but yeah, no, totally interested in playing that and seeing yeah. what, what happens because the, the story they seem to be panning out and that seems pretty good. Yeah, um, and I'll I'll be playing more Persona, uh, more Persona, and doing more a lot Sona. Of, more Sona, and okay. uh, doing a lot of driving. I'm really not looking forward to six hours of driving. Before. Except you're not going to be driving, though, are you? No, of course not. Oh, yeah, okay. I will have the backseat. Yeah, all he's a talent. The talent doesn't drive. Damn right. <laughs> Damn right, Darren. And on that note, uh, Mark, where can people uh, reach us? Uh, they can email us at headsetabuse at hotmail.co.uk. They can check out our Facebook at facebook.com forward slash headsetabuse. Uh, we are on Twitter at headsetabuse. Uh, do we have a YouTube URL yet? I don't think we do, do we? Nope. Okay, we'll, we'll get that sorted. Um, sure. Yep. Fire us an email, send us some questions. Awesome. Uh, well, thanks for joining me, guys. Uh, I'm going to go and play Persona. Funnily enough. Uh, And we will see you all next time. Bye.